This is Curtis coming at you from Ace Bread Studios once again, covering the 2021 NFL season. Going to look into the Dolphins, their running game, running backs, and offensive line blocking. Do a little film study, and then after that, I'm going to give you some stats, analytics, and really kind of encapsulate everything in a perspective of an echelon-tiered bit of information with film, as I said, stats, analytics, and my own personal opinion. So, looks like Miles Gaskin and Savin Ahmed are not going to play this week because of the C word. They might, but they might not. So we're going to see what we are losing if they don't play. I think some fans are really not satisfied with Miles Gaskin. I'm not one of them. I believe he's a very good running back. And some people have felt for a while that maybe he's not hitting the holes correctly in this night. And I even kind of fell into it too. I think it was uh, Moose Johnson a couple of weeks ago in one of the games that, oh, he, you know, he missed something here. I went back into the film and it really wasn't. And I think from that point, the narrative has been that Miles Gaskin is tentative and not really hitting the holes the way he should. I don't think that's the case. So I got a bunch of tape here before I get into all the rest of the spiel. Let's look at the tape. And then once you see it, the stats will be able to be layered on top. So here's the tape. Let's take a look at it and see what we see. You can see on this play right away, there's penetration in the backfield and Gaskin has to alter his course. And then he just runs into a mob. Let's take a close look at the blocking. You can see that Hunt gets beat. Eichenberg gets beat, and then he just gets corralled in. Inside draw with the pull. But you can see right here, Dita gets swum on, and Gaskin has no chance. Again, the inside draw. And doesn't go anywhere, but you'll see right here, Jackson gets beat, tight end. Smythe gets beat, and there's nowhere to go. Ahmed in the backfield does the old uh, in and out, as my coach used to say. And Davis does a good job blocking and shows his speed and picks up a nice run. Gets the ball, and he's not patient enough with his blocks. Look at the left side, how much space was there. He just saw the flash of blue, didn't trust the blocking, and took it back. I mean, this is, uh, you know, a decent pickup, three or so, but if he had just been patient enough, it could have been a big, big play. Inside, I like the way Dieter comes off and picks the block up here, and then Gaskin does a nice stop and go, and that was a good gain, and that, that was a real nice pickup by Dieter. And an excellent move by Gaskin. Down the goal line, you see Jackson just, just falls to the ground, can't handle it. Smythe again misses the block, and you know, no one's doing anything with that. See, they got the double. There's some space for Gaskin to work with. A little hop cut, and he picks up a solid gain. Zone stretch on the Wildcat, and you can see Eichenberg is beaten instantly and that kind of spoils the play a little draw here now it looks like there's a lot of space right there but watch how quickly it closes hunt gets destroyed and so does jackson inside eichenberg is beaten jackson's getting beat hunt's getting beat deed is getting beat the only one who didn't get beat on that one looked like davis I've been in the backfield again, nice little cutback. Uh, Gusecki puts a nice little block there. Hunt kind of loses it, and so does Davis. The blocks, they can't hold the blocks, and it really doesn't go too far. They got to double up with Dieter and Jackson. It doesn't really get much push. Hunt gets beat, and because you can't really get one on one blocks here, you don't really have the numbers either. 48 to safety, he's just sitting there, and really not much you can do on that. Get the two doubles inside with Dieter and Jackson and Hunt and Davis. As soon as Dieter pulls off, they get the linebacker. Jackson loses control. And this is a really great cut down the line. This is like a two-gap cut by, Ga by Gaskin. But then Eichenberg misses his block. 
And that was a real nice pickup by Gaskin. He maximized that one. Get the doubles inside. And it just, there's really not much space. They're not able to totally move him, and everything is kind of folding. Looks like Davis is getting beaten on the edge. But he's patient enough, and it's just a little crazy. He picks up something, doesn't get the loss. But then again, here you see, instantly beat, nowhere to go. The offensive line's instantly beat, and there's nowhere to go. Let's take a closer look at this one. Gaskin gets the inside. Draw. And again, the double is just not able to set free the uh, D tackle to, to, to push him out. And Jackson's on the floor, I believe. Uh, Hunt's on the floor. And Smythe can't make the block. And then he's just corralled and nowhere to go. There's like so many missed blocks on this. Again, you got a nice little power look here. So like doing a zone stretch. And you get the double by uh, Jackson and Eichenberg, and they're just not really able to dislodge the end. And it looks pretty much corralled up. So Gaskin's got to start going into the patience mode. And then Eichenberg and Jackson are on the floor, and that's no good. No good. So now you got seven, eight guys possible blockers, and Eichenberg gets beat immediately. I mean, let's take a look at this again. How does how do you expect anybody to run the football on this? All right, so you know, clearly you can see that the blocking's not there. You can see that we have major issues. And the running backs, for the most part, Ahmed missed that one to the left where he could have broken out if he had trusted Gusecki's uh, slide block and been a little bit more patient. But other than that, pretty much, the running backs are getting everything they can. And I'm going to add some stats here to really expound on this and kind of cement it. Now, there's a stat called um, running efficiency. It's a weird stat, but what it measures is the time spent, uh, the amount of yards spent to get to where you got to go between runs. So the higher the number, the more east and west runner you are, and the lower it is, the more north and south. Now, it, it can, it's not really an exact science because the running back could miss a hole and make it bigger. He could not be good at reading. Uh, he might be normally an uh, east and west runner. Uh, he might even be a, a more north and south run. It doesn't measure the effectiveness. But when you look at Miles Gaskin, he's 14th at 4.09. So he covers 4.09 yards to get to where he's got to go, or actually seconds, I should say. And he is one of the most east and west runners in the game. And we can see in the tape here, he had to be. Now, as an example, Harris who we were looking at drafting with the Pittsburgh, he's point, uh, 4.08. He's got poor blocking. And so big and small, we're seeing that east and west really is determined by the quality of the offensive line, although instincts does play a, a, a bit of that. Now, to support Gaskin as not being the culprit, as really making the most of the situation, He's 31st in the league in seeing eight men in the box at 17.53%. So around one out of every five snaps, he's seeing eight men in the box. Some of this is because of the looks we're giving. But as you can see here, mostly is because defenses don't respect our run game. They don't respect our blocking. They don't see a need to challenge the offense to stop the run but yet they're doing it anyway. Now, some people are very high on Lindsey. They saw him play those, that tail end of the Panthers game, and they're like, he's a much better back. He needs to come here. 
I want to give it two bits of context. One, Lindsey came in at the end of the third quarter when the Panthers' defense, which is not great to begin with, was beaten down. The game was way over. They weren't giving their all. Okay, but you can't really measure that. But what you can measure is in 2018 when Lindsey had his Pro Bowl season, a lot of people say, oh, he's a Pro Bowl running back. His yards before carry, before contact, was 3.8 yards. As contrast, right now, yards before contact, Gaskin is getting 2.2. So Lindsey was getting a yard, 0.6 more before contact came to him. Okay? And... You have to understand, contact where it occurs matters. Matters Closer to the line of scrimmage, you're dealing with 300, 290-pound defensive linemen. It's much more difficult to break their contact than it is the contact of a linebacker, a cornerback, a safety due to size. Technique comes into play and all this other stuff. But once you get past that line of scrimmage as a running back, you're on the move. And when you're on the move, you have the edge. If that contact is closer to the line of scrimmage, you're just getting into your motion and you're more compromised as a runner. And this is one of the reasons why Lindsey was so productive in that 2018 season. He was getting 3.8. I think it was led the league. His yards after contact was 1.6. Gaskin is, I think, 1.4 or, or 1.2. But then if you look at Harris, Harris who's a big, big man, is 1.8. Okay, so that contact's coming for Harris and Gaskin close to the line of scrimmage, and small and big are finding it harder to get yards after contact than, say, Lindsey, who was getting 3.8, and he was over the line of scrimmage and getting contact with smaller players and still only getting 1.6, if you follow me. So Lindsey... He is a good player. I like him, but we have to keep everything in contact, context. He couldn't really run the football with the Texans because they didn't have a good line. He'll struggle here, too. I mean, he, you know, he did well against the Panthers pretty much. It wasn't great. It was like 3.5 or something. But he's not the end-all, be-all. And I think as we lay these things out, you're going to see Miles Gaskin is overall the better player and even the better runner. Now, adding more context to this offensive line and why this running game is so bad and why the offensive line is really culpable. We run 171 RPO plays. We're fourth in the league in running RPO plays. And we're fifth in the league with 78 of runs out of the RPO. Now, not all runs are the same. It's not just about running the football. When a running back is behind the quarterback who's under center, it's more difficult for the defense to see what's going on because there's so many options. And you don't really get to see right away what the quarterback's doing with the football. He's got to snap it. He turns. There's confusion. Also, the angles. You can run the whole plethora of running plays out of uh, under center, the quarterback under center, whereas in RPO, when you're in – the pistol or you're in shotgun, you're limited to some of the plays that you can run. And it does limit the running attack. It's not to say you should always be on the center. Uh, 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 a mixture of looks is actually really key. But it does limit the overall presentation of the run game. And it, it doesn't really help the running back. Now, here's the final bit of the puzzle to why this offensive line is so bad. I had somebody say to me, uh, you know, letting pressure in is part of their thing. You know, I'm like, yeah, I understand trap blocks and screen blocks and release blocks. This is not what's going on. This line is terrible. And this stat of 12 personnel, we run 12 personnel more than anybody. Currently, we're running at 58% where the league runs at 22%. And that means 12 personnel is two tight ends. So we're bringing extra help to the line of scrimmage more than anybody, double more than anybody else in the league. 
That means we're having one or two extra blockers on the, in the pass game and in the run game and still not getting it done. Texans, we ran it uh, 12 personnel 75 times in week eight. Week nine against the Texans, 75%. Week 10, we ran it 69%. Week 11 against the uh, Jets, we ran 82%. Week 12 against the Panthers, 68%. This week, we limited it to 30, well, the previous league against the Giants, we ran it 34% and had 57% success rate compared to 50% of the league. So we were very successful, even though we ran it more. And this is something that we need to be focused on. Even if we don't believe in this offensive line, this offense, this is a good stat. We ran plenty of uh, 11, pers uh, 11 personnel, which is 60. We ran 60% of the time, that's three wides. And this is one of the reasons why the offense looks so good. But the problem, the context of this is the Giants are a very incomplete team. They don't have a secondary, don't have edge runners, uh, pressure, uh, edge pressure players. They got two defensive tackles who are big, but not fast enough to really get in and do damage in a pass rush. They got one linebacker, and they had a poor offense. If these distribution of looks, uh, formations, can continue and we can be successful, this is good news. I personally don't think we will. I think as we run into this, especially the Saints, I think maybe, you know, against the Jets, we can continue this. Even though the Jets, we ran 12 personnel 82% of the time. That means we were protecting. So it'll be, this game is very interesting from that standpoint. And especially if we lose Miles Gaskin and Savin Ahmed, we will really get to see a lot of things. This game against the Jets is billed as like a stepping stone, and it might be, but there's a lot of critical looks that we can get out of it as evaluators. My personal opinion is I think we could be in a little bit of trouble without um, Miles Gaskin. I think he's a big piece of the glue that holds everything together. But it will be interesting to see if Duke Johnson and Philip Lindsay uh, can get in there and prove that they are the better backs, or at least equal. Can this offensive line survive running 12 personnel only 34% of the time? This will be interesting to see. So this is Curtis. I hope you enjoyed the film, a little bit of analytics and stats. Me personally, I, I'm very concerned about I still put the offensive line as a key thing, and I think Tua and Gaskin and whoever's running behind them should get a lot of credit, and obviously Tua for passing because they're not getting much from the most critical unit in the game. And I think it's proving out that way through stats and film. So I think you have to give a lot of leeway to these skill positions that are wrapped around this offensive line. But it will be interesting to see what happens. Can they continue this? So I hope you enjoy the, this film, the study, and everything else. Uh, please like, comment, and subscribe. Comments mean the most. I get so much. I mean, the comment, this the study came out of a bunch of comments saying they wanted to see uh, the running backs, they wanted to see Gaskin, they wanted to see uh, the offensive line. So keep the comments coming. I learn, I, I plan around them as far as film studies and things like that, so I appreciate that. Subscribes and likes help us with the Google overlords. Keeps us in business, and I like that too. So anyway, catch you next time. This is Curtis saying be well. See you soon. You want to create your own sports book? Aceperhead.com allows you to be a bookie and create your own online sports betting business so your customers can bet on thousands of gambling options each day.